Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea. If you're new here, if you're not new, welcome back. You're the realist. I appreciate you for coming back. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on all social media. I am at I am CC Suarez. If you want to stay spicy hot or you want to check out what else is on my website, go ahead and go to theselfishsuarezes.com and you can find all that. Today I have another riveting episode of For the Love of God, Please Don't Sue Me. This is all just my own opinion and you put this out on the internet publicly. But just in case someone does try to sue me, let's go ahead and hear from today's sponsor, shall we? The sponsor of today's video is once again, Scentbird. Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring this video. Y'all really are the realists and I appreciate you. As many of you already know, Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over six hundred brands. And although it is a monthly subscription service, typically you do have the flexibility to skip any month without penalty. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $16. That is crazy. So you can smell like someone's expensive wife without the price tag. Okay, who doesn't want to smell expensive? You better not have your hand raised because I know you want to smell expensive, okay? Because same, every month you get to pick out exactly what you want so there's no surprises, you're not just gonna get some random scent. And also this way you're able to really try out exactly what you picked out without having to commit to a full size bottle because they do send you a 30 day supply. So I mean, technically I have a three month supply because they sent me these three fragrances and they come in these little, these little sacks, these little velvet sacks. So like I said, they come in these little twist canisters and it's just like a lipstick tube, basically. You just beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. And if you're wondering, well, Chelsea, how do I know which one it is? You just take it right out and you can tell. And this one is Fall Cashmere by Skylar Clean Beauty. And you get your little like info card with it too, which is pretty awesome. So I got the Skylar Clean Beauty Fall Cashmere one. And then they also sent the Align fragrance from Good Habit and then Orange in chestnut by sense of wood don't get me wrong i did smell all these right when they came in because i'm obs like i'm obsessed with perfume oh my god that one smells real good too Oof. Ooh, that one's that's, that one kind of smells like my mom nice mm. okay i think that this one's all right after testing them all out six more times <laughs> this time the one that they sent me that's my favorite is the align fragrance by good habit this one is amazing If you have no idea what you're looking for, don't worry because Scentbird actually does have a fragrance. Fragrance? Good Lord. <laughs> they do have a fragrance quiz on their website. So you can start there and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. And actually, if you go to their website right now, okay, not right now, go after this video, finish this video first, please. <laughs> don't be messing with my viewer retention. But if you go to their website, you can actually get 30% off your first order. I will have that link down below with that code as well in the description box and I'll put it in my pinned comment as well. Once again, thank you Scentbird for sponsoring this video and being a sponsor of my channel. And thank you to you guys for supporting my sponsors. I really appreciate it and it makes it so that I can continue to put out amazing content for you guys. Let's go ahead and get into today's video though. All right, all right, all right. Okay, friends. So in this video today, we are going to be reacting to a video that I even have titled in here, the cult within MLMs. Within a lot of these MLMs, there are different teams. And I just think it is absolutely insane when a team can jump from one MLM to another to another and have like the same leader. And it's just, from what I get from this one team and this one leader, I get strong cult vibes. I just do not like it. Again, this is all my own opinion, of course, duh, as many of the disclaimers on my channel say, but I just, I think it's fascinating and we're just going to go ahead and, and watch it. But to give you a little bit of a heads up, this is a Jesse Lee Ward video that we are reacting to. Of course, you already knew that from the cringy thumbnail that I made. However, <laughs> I did do a deep dive on her. I will have that linked up there down below and you can just go find it on my channel. It's one of my most watched videos. But in that, I just, I explained why she was fired from Modare, which is another MLM. And then she hopped over to prove it. And she always says that it like was she was set up and it was fake and all this stuff. But in my video, I read off an email from one of the top ranking people from the corporate side of Modare that like set things straight. It was a beautifully written email. It was awesome. I loved it. And I just think it's going to be hilarious to actually watch and show y'all my live reaction to her explaining it. So I can't wait. Again, this is me blind reacting to this. I have not watched this yet. I've watched like 
five seconds of it. Podcast because we don't talk about this. Like we do, but we don't. And uh, I want to first of all let everyone go around and introduce themselves. If you don't know, my name is Jesse Lee. You can call me hashtag Boss Lee. I've been in business for years. Oh my God! As of today, I've said it at least a hundred times. So four years. I keep like using the example. Um, but this is going to be a really juicy live. So I do suggest you stay tuned. I do suggest you ask questions. And I did ask a question on my Instagram story, so we will answer all of your questions. So I know I'm excited about that. Um, I live in Frisco, Texas. Um, like I said, I've been in business for years, and we're gonna spill some tea, so feel free to share. All right, um, I mean, I feel like we're gonna spill tea. It's been a juicy couple of weeks and months now. So, all right, who are you guys? Oh, my name is Sydney Smith. Uh, well, I didn't know I was going first. My name is Sydney Smith. Uh, I have also been in business for four years today. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, so I live here. Drop a four below. That'd be funny. Like everyone drop fours. <laughs> I live here in Dallas. Well, Frisco. Well, live somewhere. <laughs> I live somewhere in Texas. I've lived in all three of those places. Uh, I moved here about two years ago, and uh, that's really all. You all you need to know about me right now, probably. Yeah, we'll get into it. We'll Don't get worry. into it. <laughs> uh, my name is Bree. I've also been in business for four years. Oh my god! Happy anniversary! Wish us a happy anniversary, please. Like, can we please have some happy yeah, anniversary? Yeah, drop a happy anniversary in the comments below. Yeah. Um, I'm a mom of two, and recently moved my family here from Illinois to Texas. So I live in Prosper, Texas, which is like 12 minutes from here. So most of these people, I, or I'm assuming the three people it looks like that are with her. I don't know why the other girl's out of frame. That's weird. Um, those three people are people who moved with her from Modair to Prove It. And as of this video, she has been in Prove It for four years. Or they all have been in Prove It for four years because they moved over from Modair to Prove It with her. Anyways. And also, uh, fun fact, uh, retiring my fiance as well. So we all live in Texas. She does like to get a little petty spaghetti. Like, she's the aggressive <laughs> one. Um, I, for those of you not listening to the podcast version of this, just watch out for her eyeballs. <laughs> those of you who know her know what's coming, but the eyes are going to get really big when the tea is about to be spilled. So stay tuned. And then who are you? <laughs> I was picturing her eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to miss. Uh, Courtney Shepard, and uh, I have lived in Texas. Uh, what, almost two years now. Uh, also been in business for four years. Woo, shocker. I know, You're shocker. your head in this one. Your head's oh. not in this one. Oh, oh hi. <laughs> um, also been in business four years, and uh, actually so cool because, uh, same story, retired the husband and... Um, they all, almost all of them, have uh, the colored extensions, like the, the tape-ins that they just like put in. And this is so strange because... When she was in Modair, they all had like colored hair, and that was like the the like cult thing, right? What part of a cult is all, all dressing alike, all doing your hair the same way, like things like that, right? It's your how you look, and now like all of them have these extension things. Like, what are y'all doing? This looks so. This looks so weird. <laughs> we have three babies now. You'll see Caden here in a minute. Um. Also, they all moved from other places to be closer to her. Why do they have to do that if they can work from anywhere, anytime, right? Why do they have to move closer to her? Why do they have to uproot their lives to be with her? That's also weird. Yes. So that is the gang. Um, the other original eight that is still standing strong uh, is Christina. And she was actually with me two days ago. So everyone is rocking and rolling. Everybody's living in their dream locations. She actually relocated from New York to California. I happened to be there and I spent the day with her. So it was awesome. So, all right, let's talk about it. So 
Four years ago, we made the decision to join our company. Our company's Prove It. We are the only pure therapeutic ketones on planet Earth. That's what we sell. We're not here to sell you on anything. We're here to tell you the stories uh, and answer all your questions, which is why I asked you the questions earlier. Um, it's been crazy. Like, I think it's pretty fair to say that. Uh, these two did not want to, would, said they would follow me anywhere, but would not. <laughs> you tell them. I don't know. <laughs> It's funny. Me? Okay, so uh, Cindy and I said we would follow Jesse Lee anywhere, but the one stipulation was we would not go to the keto company because we did not want to make lots of money on people starving themselves. And here we are, four years later, nobody's starving, but the money has been made. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, uh, Brie, well, Brie, I nobody's starving, but we're making money. Okay. Yet, I've even reacted to a clip before where Jesse Lee says, the best way to take ketones and lose weight is to, this part makes me so mad, to take them in the morning and then don't eat until you're hungry and just don't eat unless you're hungry. I love your story. So I want to tell your story like in a quick little bloop, bloop, bloop. Um, I love all your stories. Why I, yeah, I sure. Why? So, um, I was actually, can we like spill tea immediately? Also, I know I keep stopping. I'm sorry, but she also encourages them to do like 72 hour fasts and not eat for three ish days or longer like that that is that is starving yourself that is starving yourself yeah okay <laughs> if you want to you just feel like you okay. never said this on my video it's never been podcasted um so but it is a great example of if you don't have anything nice to say don't oh, say okay. anything at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so drop a cup of tea in the comments below because it's actually one of my favorite stories. Uh, because she was she was just originally going to go on a trip to Mexico. Yeah. Wasn't that just rude? Like only what? Like only one of them got to even say why she was here, or where she came from. And then the other girl was about to say something and she just interrupted her and was like, okay, like, nope, we're, you're done talking. Like, that's, that seems really rude. Don't cut someone off like that. Like, yeah, maybe like gear them back to like where you need to go. Like me and Josh do that all the time together on our podcast, Beauty and the Dad Bod. It's linked down below. And also the crazy thing is, is that they're, they're not mic'd up. Like, think of how shitty the audio is for her podcast because this is what she does. She records the like she I guess takes like the audio from what wherever maybe she's recording it on like someone's phone or something on like voice memos or something but they don't have mics they don't have a cloud lifter they don't have an, an interface like they don't have any of that stuff to make the stuff I have right here to make it sound good and so it's just like the the most minimal effort just the laziness it's so crappy and it, it's it's um, a insane to me <sighs> and me and Josh even talked about this I think I think on the last episode of the podcast I can't remember what it, what when it was but we actually just talked about this just like lazy influencers oh it might it might have been on the actually yeah I think it was on the bonus episode is when we talked about it because it's just regurgitated like so this is on a Facebook live this is on an Instagram live she's gonna maybe put this on YouTube it's on you know live on TikTok she has like seven devices going and then she has it on a podcast too. And it's like, well, why can't people just watch this? Like, why are you just regurgitating information? This makes no sense. And like, this isn't a, I don't know. It's just, it drives me crazy that it's just such laziness. Yeah, me too. I was terminated. I was the only one that went though. <laughs> yes. I was determined. Christina, Christina also went too in California. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to Mexico and, you know, <laughs> If you don't ever think, if you think people aren't listening, people are always listening. And uh, just so y'all know, your tea. Um, I was in the same company as them, and I went to Mexico with people from our last company. And I was in the pool drinking my cocktails with my man. And I have never heard people be so mean and so disrespectful, so disrespectful about people. And the fact that they were saying the things that they were saying about her, about Jesse Lee, I was immediately turned off. Like, I, no, absolutely not. It solidified. I went to Mexico kind of knowing that I was going to follow her and just 
I don't know, man, like, let's see what's going to happen. And when I went there, I was like, there is no way that I ever would continue in business with these people. So I just went, I would act like I was drinking my drink, but I was just sipping on the same one all day. <laughs> <laughs> wasted saying the rudest things I've ever heard and so then I would just go back to the hotel room and just voice message everything that they said to her so uh if you think people are listening they're uh, I was listening and <laughs> I knew then and there that I did not want a future with people like that and while this whole thing was going on the one person who never said anything bad or negative and was strong and just respectful through it all was the person that they were dragging and so I knew that the person that I was going to follow and that I was going to put my family's livelihood in the hands of was Jessie Lee and that's why I'm here because of her character and so I will be loyal to a fault forever because of that so I'm that's why I'm here. I'm probably crying. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me people look at so, so what does it mean? This is amazing. This is so beautiful. So how – oh, God, this is – this is wow, wow. She really just said that Jesse Lee was, like, classy through it all and, you know, didn't drag anyone through the mud. Are they going to talk about why she was – why she was terminated? Like, what? <laughs> she was sued for defamation. And the other person won, technically. It was It was settled. But she ended up paying him a lot of money. I'll say allegedly, but you can literally just look at the documents. And that person also told me what happened because I talked to him. It's absolutely insane. Again, go watch that video I did on Jesse Lee. I explain everything in that video and that that video is the truth. It is yes, I put my opinion in there too, but the court documents, the emails from the Modair person, like from the top um of like corporate telling people and explaining why she got terminated like how brainwashed are all these girls that they believed her so much and followed her it's crazy it's i don't want to say it's crazy it's it's sad and it's very unfortunate because she doesn't care about them at all if anyone can answer this what does it mean when we say original eight because some people are like oh the number changes the numbers never changed um maybe you want to take this one we were just talking about the other day but like what does that mean when i say oh my god our original eight and obviously this is Five, you mentioned Christina, and then I said not everybody is, is still here. Um, I mean, I could start, and then I think it would be valuable for them to get, you know, someone to get their opinion to. Uh, so, and for those of you who don't know, we're telling the story of how we were in a company, and Jesse Lee was suspended for... Oh, yeah, she probably told him that. Yeah. <laughs> story and then she was like blah, blah, blah. But, I mean her followers know her you guys should know yeah. but not everybody knows what the story we're telling so um, four and a half years ago starting around June she flew to Utah and she was well I can say that yeah um, she <laughs> everyone thinks we just came out that okay so uh, she walks in to the office and walks out and immediately there are ten people who get a text message okay it wasn't eight it was ten Ten people get a text message, we're in a group chat. Her memory's so good, like, thank God. I'm like, oh, sh there were more than, okay. I just remember <laughs> the eyeball with your red thing. <laughs> okay, there were ten people that got a text message. We were in a group chat, and it was it, it said, I have been suspended. And no, that, 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 wasn't, that wasn't the Utah trip. That was August, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I mean, like, you so know. she goes, I, I, got, I got terminated. She walked in, she got terminated. Mind you, she was suspended for months prior to that, and nobody knew. Because she kept building, she kept recruiting, she kept selling the product, she kept talking about it. No one in the team had a clue there was anything wrong. Mind you, there were people that were recruited moments before she was terminated. And she couldn't talk to them afterwards. Okay? So 10 of us got a text. She walks into the elevator. She said, I've just been terminated. And my, I immediately saw it. I said, no. So she was suspended from the company, but yet kept kept working. Why would you keep working if you're suspended? Like, you're not going to get any of the money that you make in that time. That's stupid. That's just not smart on her part. But I think that also shows that she wasn't taking it seriously. Now, allegedly, the reason why she was suspended was uh, for allegations of having a 
alleged affair with the CMO of the company, of Modair. And his name's what? Alex something? He's uh, Italian or I don't know, something. They're not dating anymore, but they were together at that time and then they broke up and then they got back together, I want to say at like the beginning of this year, but now they're not together anymore at all. And she can say all day long, oh, you can't say that I had an affair. You weren't, what? Girl, you were legally married and then you were sleeping with this guy. That's an affair. That is what has been alleged to me. If that's not true, then okay. And I will admit that I'm wrong, but I'm not I'm not going to b- take her word for it. She doesn't know the difference between anything but direct sales and network marketing and multi marketing. She says that they're all different. And it's like, girl, no, they're not. It's the same thing. What are you doing? What? You're lying. You should go, she's like, I wouldn't joke about this. I'm like, you're, you're lying. Like I have chills and I'm sweating. <laughs> you're always sweating, time. but yeah. No, no, same time. Um, and now I know the story. I didn't know this then. She immediately gets a phone call. It's called network marketing. Okay, like uh, uh, they knew before she even knew that she was walking out of the termination. She got a hey, phone call. speaking of the phone call, love you, grab, love you guys. The phone call is over here love on Facebook me, watching. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have access to uh, the screenshots of that group text. So I'll insert those if I can find them. <laughs> so we'll jump there for a second. Okay, but yeah, yeah, so Lisa Grossman's the one who called me. I was on an elevator. She said, where are you? I said, Utah. She said, get the f*** out of there. Told me to fly to Texas. I said, I said. I know, but that was very. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but when we say original eight, eight people ended up getting suspended and then also terminated with me. Because so, the other two. Oh, the other two tried See? to be, they were narcs, so they tried to, send, <laughs> yeah. It's a deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's trauma. You forget these things, right? You're, you don't know about this? So there were, t- there were Look at her. Her eyeballs are getting bigger and bigger by the moment. <laughs> she doesn't know about the deal. They all got emails, and then two of them. Okay, like, the, the letter, they all got the same letter. The letter basically said, if you turn in Jessie Lee, some kind of information on her, we will reinstate your account. She manipulated these girls to not say anything. She made it seem like she was going to protect them and that everything was going to be fine and they weren't going to get fired. But then they got fired along with her. And she's like, oh, well, they, they're they narcs. No, girl, they were saving their own ass. They were saving their own ass. They don't... What are you talking about? Like, they don't, they didn't want to lose their job because of you. But it's crazy how she, they're like putting them down and they're like, well, they're not loyal. And now it's us versus them and they're narcs. And it's like, they're not narcs. They told the truth. And, and they were basically, from my understanding, from what has been alleged to me, they were served and they were, they were scared. They didn't want to be sued. They didn't want to be part of the Jesse Lee Ward and, Jane Doe's. They didn't want to be a part of that in the defamation case that this person, when this person sued you for telling everyone that he had herpes and that you think that he should lose his wife, his family, his job, and even his life. Guys, it's crazy. Please go watch that video. And if you've already watched it, rewatch it as a refresher. It is insane. They were suspended. So eight of them were like, uh, there's nothing for us to turn in. And then two of them were like, oh, we can probably find something in this chat. Number eight, and then number eight. So that's why. All right. So when we joined, and uh, it was a really great start. <laughs> I was on the phone with Lisa just last night. Lisa goes, "Those first two years, you maybe work harder in my career than yeah. I've ever worked." Um, but I think I think we should, you know, obviously, well, hopefully, obviously, we're experiencing a lot of experiencing a lot of success. Uh, we've expanded into 28 countries now. We have over a million customers as an organization. We've sold over $200 million in ketones. Uh, It's a very, very real business. And so I asked you guys for some questions and I just kind of want to round robin and and maybe one, each person can answer a question and uh, we'll kind of go through these because I I think we all agree. I'll ask this. Do you guys agree that this is the best thing that could have happened? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. And I- from what I have been told from many people who have been in Prove It, also Airbnbs, and other people as well, you are instructed to make a like a ghost account. And sorry if y'all can hear Wiggum 
snoring, but he's in his bed and he's so comfy and he just looks like the cutest little boy in the world. But they are instructed to have a ghost account. And that means that they make, or I'm pretty sure it's what it's called, but they make a separate account that like doesn't have any like link to them, I guess. And then whenever they buy trials, because they are encouraged to buy trials so that they can promote them, use them, sell those trials to people who want to do a 10-day, 30-day trial, whatever, they buy those through the ghost account and then they get commission off of it. Because you're not going to get commission off of what you buy yourself, but that ghost account is created as if it is a customer under you. Like you are the rep assigned to that ghost account, to that like imaginary person, right? So that's what they say to do. And then who else gets commission for that too? Your upline. Your upline, which is I'm itchly, gets commission for that as well. So I just think that's important to understand that that's how this works. And that million whatever dollars in sales, they they aren't keeping track of, okay, what comes from ghost accounts, what doesn't, because there's really no way to tell, you know, from a higher up standpoint, what is truly a ghost account and what isn't. Because if someone's asked, they're going to lie about that. Because I mean, essentially, that's fraud, you know? So I just think that's important for you to understand when they say all of these numbers. Just try to keep in mind and always ask yourself, well, how much of that came from your downline? I'll just say that piece where my whole life was falling apart in 2017, not just mine, theirs were all obviously dramatically affected as well. Everything came together exactly how it was supposed to be. And I know that when you're in the middle of, you're in the, into the thick of it, uh, I know when you're in the, in the thick of it, it's, it's really easy to start questioning things like, why is this happening to me? What is going on? Like, there's no way I'm gonna survive this. And that shift of why is this happening to me to why is this happening for me was one of the most distinct mindset shifts that were, was that was made uh, because otherwise we would have been completely on, uh, enveloped by just quite frankly the anxiety and depression of the whole situation what do you think would happen if they didn't laugh at her jokes you think she would just like do you think she would just stare at them and be like Probably. When everything is falling apart and you can't see straight, it's like the darkness is closing in. Um, all of us, it just, it's just amazing how it all came together. Um, all right, so speaking of, somebody, any of you can answer this. Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give someone that is feeling defeated now that you are all having success? <laughs> hmm. I can, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, basically, the first two years of my business, this is how I felt. So. Uh, I will tell you what I did, which is what not to do, and then what I did that fixed it so that you know what to do. So you don't make the same mistake that I did for the first two, and a, two years in business. Uh, well, more like the first year and a half. The first year and a half I was in business, they all were super successful, super fast, which is incredible. It's so exciting. I was so happy for them, and then I was pissed um, <laughs> because I wasn't experiencing that yet. And... Uh, what I did that I don't ever recommend people do is I pulled away and I thought that they didn't like me, that they didn't want me, that they were disappointed in me, that they were mad at me, uh, that I didn't belong, that whatever, all of, all of these terrible thoughts, which I'm sure whoever asked that question and probably a lot of you guys watching can relate to. And so I just like pulled away from everything. I stopped going to the Zoom meetings. I stopped going to the trainings. I stopped talking to the chats. I left chats. Even when Justin Lee was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me. Uh, Knowing fire. that I was very upset. Um, and I lied to myself a lot about how I was feeling and what I was doing and all of these things. I did everything I shouldn't have done, which it took then longer, I believe, in order to get to where I wanted to go. When I figured out that if I wanted to feel better, I had to act before I felt, and so I needed to plug Ooh, in. Y'all better write that down. Yeah, that right. Put some respect on that. Can you repeat that? Because some people were not listening. I feel like I felt Brittany's eyes get bigger. I had it. So I was waiting to feel before I did anything, and I needed to act before I felt, which means mm. I needed to show up to the trainings even when I didn't feel like it, and I needed to talk to these people even if I felt like I didn't belong or I didn't have anything valuable valuable to say, and I needed to do what I was supposed to be doing in business that I kept lying about um, before I felt confident, before I felt successful, and before I felt all of those things that you're wanting to feel. 
And so plug in hard, go to all of the trainings that you can, talk to as many people as you can, um, listen to all of the value that's out there. Jesse Lee provides so much value that people just don't listen to it, and if you would listen to it, you would feel closer to her. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that, so act before you feel is my biggest advice, and don't pull away, push in harder, uh, and you will get out of that feeling faster, because it took two years for us to hit Okay, so um, act before I felt. I mean, I agree with it, but I don't agree with it because pushing yourself even harder to do something that essentially is making you feel like garbage already isn't going to make you feel better. But if it's something that like I'm complaining about, I'm like, oh, like I'm upset about like my my eating habits or something. Like I'm, well, actually it's take last night into account. I knew that if I made cheeseburger stromboli that I made during a live stream with y'all, that it was gonna make me feel like, garbage well guess what I ate it anyways and it was not worth it it was not worth it afterwards I was so tired my stomach hurt and like when I'm eating good like eating good clean food you know healthier food still delicious but just like better for you I feel a million times better I feel like lighter not only like physically but mentally I, I don't know if y'all like know what I mean when I say that you know like when you just eat shitty you feel like Ugh, like there's just like a heaviness not of your weight but I don't know I'm not making any sense with that but it's just gross and it makes you feel gross right but I did it anyways so I know that in order for me to feel better I have to act better before I feel better, right? So I mean, there's a there's a clear way to do that. But with an MLM, I've said it many more times, I've said it so many times, there's not that clear route, right? For instance, they always say, plug into the systems, plug into the systems. We have systems, do this. Guess what the systems are? Oh, I found out. I had seven, almost 10, I think it might, it might have been 10. I had about 10 people confirm it with me. The systems the trainings, the things that you need passwords for that they know when you do it. It's literally just you watching Boss Lee videos. And then uh, there's also like four trainings or something, Zoom calls that you have to go to every week, um, like three or four, I think. Or should it, it might be once a day. I'm, I'm not sure, I can't remember, but that's that's all it is. That's all it is. That's the systems. We have the systems. Guess what, ladies? Almost every other team has that as well. You're not revolutionary. So obnoxious. Like, I can't deal with it. So this just feels toxic to me and I don't like it. And also, Jesse, why are your extensions a full two inches longer than your hair? It looks shitty. Ugh, people keep telling me I need to dress up like her for Halloween and I'm like, I'm not doing that. No. Now, what I will do is I will do full on special effects makeup, bald cap, body paint and all that. And I will dress up as a garbage eating gremlin. I want to do that on Saturday. It's going to take a while. It's probably going to take me like hours to get it right. But yeah, I'll do that. And I'll say I'm her. I'm the worst. Our rank theme, I watched them explode. And as soon as this clicked for me and as soon as I figured it out, then we exploded as well. So. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously a shareable live. Apparently we've gotten the bomb dropping section of this uh, of this video. So if you haven't already shared, make sure you do. We'll try to give you guys some shout outs if you share the video. All right. So great answer. I love it. All right. Um, I'll ask any of you. It doesn't matter. Did you always know you would be here in four years? <laughs> That's a no for me. That's a no. I'm there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she said yo which is that like a yes and a no no, <laughs> no I literally I questioned everything in my life I was I felt why do you want a sh why do you want a shout out from her what is that going to do for you is it going to get you more followers no it's not like it's that god complex it's that have her on a pedestal you know, she she's everything. She is like a celebrity. They literally treat her like a celebrity and it's disgusting. It's not cute. It's not good. Stop it right now. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Like we were so on the outside. Like, you know, and I was the person who was able to communicate because she couldn't. And the people that were that she couldn't, she couldn't speak, you guys. She literally went mute. It was the smartest thing she ever did. Mm -hmm. And people were so hurt and so confused. And even being, um, it was the beginning of our- Please don't tell me she's crying. 
Because that's going to be so sad. She's like, we were so on the outside. Yeah, and whose fault is that? Who put who put you there? Who did that to you? Jesse Lee Ward did that to you. I was the person who was able to communicate because she couldn't. And the people that were, that she couldn't, she couldn't speak, you guys. She literally went mute. It was the smartest thing she ever did. Mm -hmm. And people were so hurt and so confused. And even being, um, it was the beginning of our friendship, mm -hmm. truly. And so, um, you know, my husband was so vested in this. This is, this is what y'all y'all hear that he's called the hubby. Like all the hubbies are her hubbies. But um, I have so many husbands. I even got a wife. Is my, is my wife <laughs> watching? watching? And then like, oh, my wife is watching. Um, Holly, you got there, girl. Holly, so Holly. you know, like he was so vested in it. We had conversations and countless conversations of like, he's like, can you trust her? And, you know, with my whole heart, I was like, I know I can, but at the same time, I still had, like, in my head, I'm still running around with all these things, like, but why are they saying this? And luckily, my memory is, like, on point. Um, you know, like, she was already like, oh, you, you just remember things that I didn't. Um, but everyone was twisting everything that we said and didn't say and actions and all of this. And in the process, I'm getting suspended, and I don't even know why. I had a free, a free incentive trip that I earned, and then it was taken from me. You know, like, it, it was so confusing. And so when I look back at where we were making this transition... And I feel like this video in itself really does show how culty the Empire is. And I think it's really important to understand that. If any of my friends who are producers, who are anything in that industry, we gotta make... A documentary about how creepy this stuff is. Listen, I look like Ron Howard in these hats. So let's, let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready to make a documentary about how this is a cult within cults, a cult within a commercial cult. I honestly, I'm, I'm surprised that they don't have tattoos that match each other, that they don't have the empire tattoos. They probably do. And I just don't know about it. And making the decision on where to go. Cause we were like, this is like, this is it, like we need to just, we need to find the right home. Um, I did not think that it would turn into this. I had, I had faith, I had belief. I knew that she was gonna be able to lead us and guide us and coach us to greatness. Um, but yeah, I, it felt like life was happening to us. And so the yeah. four of us came over time, mm -hmm. for sure. Do you want to, I know you yelled no, but do you want to say anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, because like we got asked like nine times just from what I can see right here. So yeah, um, I honestly joined with the intention of it fizzling out within six months. Um, <laughs> because... Wait, wow! 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 Your dog is whining and it needs to go outside. Can you put your cult meeting on hold and take care of your animal that apparently you care so much about? Actually have a really close friendship like we have with now. It's like, okay, well I can see far enough to take this leap of faith, but everything after that is fuzzy. I can't see anything. So that must mean it all ends soon. And so I didn't have any idea that it would be this, that it would be the money, that it would be the friendship, that it would be the culture, that it would be the impact and the ripple and any of that because my, my confidence and my belief in myself wasn't big enough to see the crystal clear vision that was already set forth for us. Oof. So are the friendships real? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what does that look like? Like, I mean, I know I can say it all day long on my well, so, video, but well, let's hear it from you. <laughs> so, one thing that I'll say that, like, we don't talk about a lot is that I've been through two times of people completely 
killing your your character completely like oh yeah like crumbling her to the damn ground so i've been in two companies with Same. jesse lee previously yeah, and this is your third uh and this is my third one yeah and the first company i actually met so jesse and i have known each other what in eight nine years now yeah long time and the first time i met her uh people uh, she didn't she didn't party for us but whatever so when she left that company i had signed with somebody else and so i had an upline in that company that was completely uh, uh, your character was just like oh god they're block her she's terrible she's horrible she's a witch she's yeah. she's selfish she's whatever all of these things and so i already had gone through one experience of uh of discovering her character when I unblocked her and took off the, the, the glasses and kind of uh, stopped drinking the Kool-Aid and I started watching her and watching her and watching her and realizing uh, her character has been consistent throughout the entire eight, nine years that I've known her. Her character has been consistent through everybody trying to tear her down, through every mean thing, nasty thing that's ever been said. It's always been consistent. So the switch over to this. Her character has always been consistent. Yeah, she's always been a shitty person. <laughs> She's she's always been that crappy person and she's able to play this character. There we go. Oh, no, maybe not. Ugh. When you take off your glasses, no girl, what you were doing is you were putting on the rose colored glasses. Like you're just going from one to another. And it really, I feel like it really speaks volumes that even people in MLMs don't like her. And I feel like more people are maybe recognizing that, hopefully. And the only reason she trains their teams for free is because she's trying to recruit their team into her team, which is completely crazy. But I mean, it's kind of it's kind of genius. Listen, evil geniuses are still geniuses, okay? But also, I wouldn't even say she's uh, an evil genius. She's more of a, a master manipulator. Definitely a master manipulator. It's crazy. To the second, the third, well, third company. This one to prove it. It was a, it was a no-brainer for me. I had already been through the experience of watching her character crumble. I had already been through people bashing her. I had already been through people crap talking her. And I think that could have gone to one of two ways, right? So it could have gone the way that it went, where we joined to prove it, or it could have gone where I said, okay, well, this is two companies now that have done this to her. Maybe I'm wrong. And that just, I think, going through this twice and defending her character twice and- Understanding maybe she's the problem. I think that's one thing that kind of people have realized now with Trisha Paytas, you know, that, okay, or J Jeffree Star is, is even a better example. You know, who who is the common denominator? Who's always the problem, right? Right? Being loyal twice just makes our friendship that much stronger. Uh, now I'm friends with everybody sitting at this table, but just I've known her the longest. And so that's, yes, the friendship is real. It's legit. And I don't think that you can go through what we went through. I don't think that you can have the loyalty, the blind trust and the faith that we have in each other without, yeah, without being real. I also think it's just kind of. Girl, she will throw you under the bus so quick. She does not care. Funny question to me because do people ask that of people that work like regular jobs and become friends? Like, I don't, I, I guess they're absolutely real. Like our, our kids are best friends. They play all of the time and, uh, business, obviously we have similar business goals and we run these massive businesses, but there's so much outside of that, that you guys might not even see. Like well, you definitely don't see. You don't see. Yeah. You conversations you don't hear, like, um, like real life stuff. Like, mm -hmm. yes, we're so much business and we're really, really great at it, but we're actual humans and we do things together and our families are friends and they hang out without us. Like our husbands be hanging out with the kids. You know? <laughs> and it's, there's- That's because that's the only people you're allowed to hang out with. <laughs> you like, you don't have any other friends. We've talked about this many times as well that- when you're in an MLM, the only people that really are around you are people who are also in MLMs or who are on your team. You will rarely have people who are in your life and that you actually spend time with and that you're close with who aren't on the same team as you. Imagine only hanging out with your coworkers and their families and stuff outside of work. Like, no, thank you. I no. Mm -mm. There's so much you don't see. So absolutely, it's real. And you'll probably never see it the way that we see it unless you're with us. Um, but it's 100% real, so 
Yeah. Hayden said something about it too. I said, <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I I will say like I, I I mean our friendship truly started four years ago and. For those of you who actually, actually pay attention, who don't think that she's the surrogate mother, or, or ha- <laughs> that I'm the surrogate mother, like, or like uh, that she has three kids that she doesn't, they're mine. Um, <laughs> she has not birthed a human yet. Um, I got some more babies. Or babies. I got some more babies. babies. We'll work on some babies. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Sydney brought up a great point. And I will just, before I even get into that, we moved here. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't, mm-hmm. and Sydney started that, you know, technically Jessica did, but then Sydney was like, I'm coming, you know, blindly, like, like the way that Sydney moved here, you know, and, um, I, we, up, we uprooted our whole family mm-hmm. to be here and, you know, to compare what Bree said at jobs, like, I'm going to tell you, I've left jobs. So that's interesting because they they followed each other and they do work together. So yes, it is like in a normal job, but they're just making that codependent choice and that lazy choice of and brainwash choice of always being together. I, what's funny is that they say they say like, oh well, they were spilling the tea and this is the truth and blah blah. blah. And it's like this isn't making y'all look good. This is making the empire your team look like more of a cult than we already thought that it was. All of you moved to be closer to Jesse Lee. What? Why? Like you, you uprooted your family. It would be different if like you, it was like mandatory, like really needed for y'all to do stuff together. Like for instance, with the podcast, me and Josh do it by Zoom. You know, like we'd see each other on Zoom. We need to be able to see each other so we can like read each other's faces and stuff and we can share a screen and all that. But eventually we would love it if he could move down here because until then, if that even does happen... Until then, he's going to travel down here and I'm, once it's warmer up there, Tony and I are going to go up there. So like every other month, one of us will switch off and, and we'll travel and be able to do like two of them in person or three of them in person. But it's just, it's, it's so, it's, this is weird. Like that makes sense. You know, this doesn't, (laughs) this does not, y'all don't need to be together to, to sell stuff or to recruit people. So why did you do that? Personally, I think that it is because it makes it harder for you to leave her if you have uprooted your life to live by her. And now like, yeah, we're, you know, these are like my friends. We, you know, hang out together all the time. Yeah, because all of you moved there to be with her. That's weird. (laughs) Like that is very, that's weird. What are you doing? That's so weird. Ooh. Those friendships go away. Mm-hmm. They go away. Like it's not tight because you work together. Like it's that's not why this became what it became. Yeah. And so um, it's absolutely real. And it started to become more real the more that I watched her show up. And like like somebody said, like Ooh. Ooh. That's I, me. I thought there was no. Nope. Um, Brooke with her submarine. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> watching her watching her go through the first time and I had already fallen in love I fallen in love with her before that. Sydney got to meet her in person. They live close to each other. I got to watch her through social media and fall in love with who she was as a businesswoman first. Um, and then uh, I actually didn't fully drink the Kool-Aid. I'm that person that's like there's three sides to every story, the left, the right, and then the truth. You know, the first side, this side of the truth. And so I, I had to watch. I had to know. I figured it out. So I watched for eight months, and I stalked so hard to know who this woman was, inside and out, inside and out. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's absolutely real, and it's it's the bond has just been built over time. Yeah. And I'll just say uh, yes, <laughs> and then I'll say uh, some. And this is a Britney quote. It's not a Jesse Lee quote. Mm-hmm. She, the, the way we interact, like the way the group of us will drop things to help each other's families, the way, you know, oh my God, this is going on. Can you get this from the airport? Can you get this from the store? Can you get what, I need this, I need that. Can you, hey, I'm in labor, whatever. Um, she, she, said, she said it multiple times now in our group chats where she's like, people just don't know what good friendship looks like. They've never had good friends. Because the things we do, like, I'm just like, oh, yeah, obviously. You know, like, Amaya's birthday. She, you know, we're, they, Brie lived here for, like, a week, and it was Amaya's birthday. And like, she, for real. 
God, she got stung by hornets on her property and didn't even sue. She doesn't own the hornets. But like if someone gets like attacked by a bird on your property that's just flying by, no, that's just fucking nature, you dum dums. Now, if it is your bird or you own the hornets, then yes, that's acceptable. Were they her hornets? No. It just shows how little these people actually understand reality and common sense also thank you again Scentbird for sponsoring this video because <laughs> i'm not trying to get sued mine and um but yeah it is real they are real friendships i genuinely care about these people i keep talking i keep wanting to cry i'm trying to hold it back uh but it's it's real and to britney's point those of you that don't have real friendships um, this is not to recruit you this is to tell a story and answer your questions like we wouldn't have known each other if it weren't for this like who is in is waiting to be part of your life and you just haven't said yes right and don't tell me that it stops when you leave a company because there's plenty of people who have left and i still talk i still don't care you want to be a real estate agent good on you sell some freaking houses i don't care like less than 10 percent success rate but they're here or there i still support you i still love you right you want to get a job go for it you want to switch companies there's been plenty of people who switch companies but that's not supportive. That's a job saying that they shouldn't leave your team because the success rate is so low. And that also isn't even a comparison to network marketing. And if there's a 10% success rate, then it's still a higher percentage than in network marketing. So I was like, good on you. Like sell some soap, whatever. <laughs> right? Like we don't care. The friendship wasn't conditional. It might've been conditional on your end. It was never conditional on, conditional on our end. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you for the people that have left, we, uh, I'll speak for myself and you guys can say yes or no, but like it's hurt me way more than it's hurt them. And not because of the things that they had to say, like it's not about what you think about us. It's about that I genuinely cared about your kids. I genuinely cared about your family. I genuinely wanted to see you win, but you didn't want it as much. I genuinely cared about your kids and your family. It hurt me more than it hurt you. No, babe, it financially hurt you because they left your team. Stop acting like you care. You don't care. You're a monster. Some people don't like like how hard I go for this person, but she has ruined so many people's lives. So many people's lives. She has threatened so many people, not only with legal action, like she's threatened me and tried to scare me, but you cannot scare me, you garbage eating gremlin. But I have heard so many truly just horror stories. But you didn't want it as much. And that is the, and that's my only like regret of when people leave is I'm like, God, I saw so much more in you than you saw in yourself. You know? So, anyway, next question. Uh, what is your biggest takeaway from the last four years? I guess we can all do one of those too. Yeah. Yes. I, would, I would also add really quick is that um, there are people that because we loved them so hard when they left and because they left so, you know, the way that they did gracefully, they come back. They come back. They come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the question? Uh, what is your biggest takeaway from the last four years? If you guys are liking this, put like a yes in the chat. I'm curious who is enjoying it. And then again, if you're sharing, just let us know. So we can give you all some shout outs. We see you on all these different live videos. I think this one's easy for me. Um, and that's just... She has 102 people watching this video. Um, at the, it, It's been less than 200 though, the entire video, I'm pretty sure. Or at least less than 250. Or at the most 250. But I'm pretty sure it's been less than that. But just to save my own butt, it's been less than that. So she she has over, what, 300,000 followers on Instagram? Over 200,000? Over 200,000 followers. And you only have 100 people watching your live stream. That's some great engagement right there, my girl. Um, a lot of you are hearing your gut and you're suppressing it because you're not sure if you're right or wrong. 
but like your gut is never wrong. So sometimes you confuse your, the, the voices of other people and the opinions of other people with your own intuition. But if you really just shut out the outside noises and you listen to your intuition, you listen to those feelings and you listen to your gut, you know exactly what you need to do in your life. You know the answer. You know the choice that you need to make. You just have to stop listening to other people. Tune into your own body, your own emotions, and your own intuition, and it won't lead you wrong, but you have to shut the rest out. Somebody said Brittany looks pissed. That's just her eyes. <laughs> she always just her looks eyes. pissed. It's just her eyes. It's the period. <laughs> um, I think I know why. Uh, I think a lot of people, they don't think they're good at anything. Or they don't have belief in themselves to go after what they want. So basically just live in an echo chamber. Just live in an echo chamber. Tune everyone out. Don't listen to anyone. And just listen to your gut. Or rather, just listen to what these people are telling you. They are not your gut. They are not your gut. And there's a difference between negative self-talk and actually listening to, like, yourself being logical. And there's a reason why people get such bad feelings about network marketing. There's a reason why. Um, or they think they'll never be successful. I think the number one reason that I hear from people on why they can't do what we do is because they think they can't do what we do. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing I think I've learned specifically being under the leadership of Jesse Lee is that you can literally do whatever. You're just not in the right environment. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have, it makes me emotional because it wasn't even until recently that I fully believed in myself and that's with success and, and money mm -hmm. and all of that. Like, that, that's awesome, and I know that if you don't have money, you don't have success right now, you might say like, oh, oh yeah, you say that, oh, the people with money say that, but it's fact, um, you should probably listen to it if that's what people with money are saying, like, <laughs> it wasn't until recently that I actually believed in myself, um, and it's a thousand percent because of this environment and this team and her leadership, and so what, one of the biggest things that I've learned through the last four years is that you can do hard things and you can do crazy insane things that you never thought were possible and you can achieve your wild dreams that you never thought would happen in your life but the reason why so many people don't and probably never will is because they're in environments that are not conducive to that mm -hmm. and they don't get out of them they don't change the people around them and they don't change mm -hmm. they don't get different perspectives and they don't explore new avenues and they, they don't do it. They just stay where they are and expect things to be different and expect um, to feel differently. And so one of the big, the, the biggest thing I've probably learned is that uh, if you change people around you and you change where you are, you change your environment, that can be through a Zoom, whatever, and you change the people you're talking to, you're taking advice from, um, that you can start to achieve the things that you want to achieve. Because I never thought I would be where I am. And I owe so much of that to Jesse Lee and this team because I know that my headspace wouldn't be right my skill set would be right. Um, I believe none of that, so it wasn't good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so my thing, I think, is is it's both you guys combined, actually. So you can do the hard things and follow your gut, but mine is actually uh, say yes and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like that is literally the what I've lived by for the last four years is just say yes and figure it out. Every single hard thing, every single thing that I'm like, I'm not sure if I should do that. I'm not sure if I can do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just say yes and figure it the hell out. Yeah. Like, I have discovered who I am as a person by doing that. Uh, Texas was a, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, uh, me and my ex just broke up. I just that's, that's not, that's not good. That's not setting yourself up for success. Um, some people do operate better under pressure. For instance, I I do. I know I do. I put myself on pretty strict like deadlines, but I do cut it close. But I have a plan. I know what I need to do. You know, going into the podcast, it wasn't say yes and figure it out. It was, okay, I need this, 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 this is how I need to have this set up. And like, that's what we do. It's just, this is very frustrating. And I feel bad for them because they're just, they're duplicates of her. And that, I feel like that's how she likes it. Like, she wants you to be you still, but not actually be you. It's like, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but make it a little bit different. And that's what all these people are. But they're exactly like her. Say yes and figure it out. No, 
prepare yourself, set yourself up for success. Don't set yourself up for failure. Be proactive. Plan shit out. Don't hesitate. I mean, if you have shit planned out and it's a good plan, go for it. But set yourself up for success. That's what you should do. Not make reckless decisions and just say yes to something and figure it out later. With some things, sure, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about big life decisions. Was a, okay, yeah, uh, me and my ex just broke up. I just got out of an abusive relationship. I'm moving to Texas in a week. Like, yeah, say yes and figure it out. Uh, I came out probably six months later. What was that? Uh, I think I want to date girls. Let me just turn my Tinder settings to that and say yes and figure it out. Like, every single, (laughs) and like, it's funny, but it's also like, I had no idea who the hell I was four years ago. I was barely in recovery. I was in an abusive relationship. I had no idea I was a flaming homosexual. (laughs) But like, we knew. (laughs) That's actually really cute. That's, I love, I love that for her. That's really fucking cute. Good for her for coming out. I, 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 I'm about to cry. I love that. I love that for her. And I love the way that she just phrased that. That's amazing. I've had so many people who are like, oh, you came out. Who's the person you first came out to with, you know, being bisexual? I was like, my husband. <laughs> and then he was like, I know. And I'm like, what? What do you mean you know? You didn't want to tell me. And he's like, I thought you knew. <laughs> and it was just something we like didn't really talk about. Yeah. So good for her. Good for her. That's amazing. However, that's not what we're talking about here. And it's, it seems like she goes from, you know, one not great situation to another. I mean, I would even be bold and say maybe you, maybe you should look into stuff and prepare yourself and make a plan and do research before just saying yes and figuring it out. Maybe. Also, though, I have heard that the more loyal and like ridiculously culty, blind, brainwashed, loyal you are to Jesse Lee Ward, the more she, you know, feeds you leads and puts people under you and um, like puts orders under you and like builds you up. So the more like the more you serve her, the better she is to you, I guess. The more like submissive, I think is what I'm trying to say. The more submissive you are to her, the better she treats you, which is. Ugh. You have no clue what you're what you're capable of because you won't say yes. Yeah. You won't just say yes and figure it out. Mm-hmm. So every single thing that my intuition has ever led me to uh, that has ever been like, I really feel like I should say yes to this, or I feel like I need to figure this out, or Jesse Lee has said something aggressive like leaders show up to events. Uh, so I got to every single event that I could ever get myself to. It's all been like it's all led up to this, where it's. I've been calling her Sydney 2.0 because I'm very proud of her, but like, Mm. it's just, it's all led up to this really, really powerful person that I'm very, very, very proud of. And it's just from saying yes and figuring the hell out. So that's what I can take away from over four years. Mm -hmm. Um, So my biggest takeaway ultimately is literally resonating with everything that they're saying, but um, to add on to it is your thoughts ultimately will lead to your destiny and had there not been the blind faith the loyalty the following the gut the saying yes like that's all starting in your mind it literally just starts in your mind and your perspective and the lens that you all starting in your mind it literally just starts in your mind and your perspective and the lens that you allow yourself to look through at any given moment it's eight for a reason. The two shifted for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the people that stayed, they stayed for their own reasons and they ultimately chose their best destiny. And the people who left, left for a reason. Actually, many reasons. People who stayed probably stayed because they, it's, it's the sunk cost fallacy, right? Or sunk cost belief, however you want to phrase that. And I've talked to a lot of these people and they're like, I won't be able to make this same money outside of doing this. So yes, I can't stand her. Yes, she is fucking scary and I'm terrified of her. However, and that's not me talking, that's people I've talked to saying that about her, but I'm going to stay. I'm going to try to do it a bit more ethically, but I'm going to stay because it's the only way I can make money. It's not the only way they can make money. It's the only way they can make the money that they are making at this moment. And that's the people who are like right below her. And that's so sad, but it's also like, I, I'm, I've already gone this far. I don't have another choice. 
I'm just going to make it work. I've already spent this much time, this much money, dealt with her for this long. I'm just going to keep dealing with it because that's easier, easier than trying to start over to trying, trying to start new. And that's so sad. Biggest takeaway is, it, good word, what a loaded question. Way, way, way to set us up over here, man. God, it's like every day there's another takeaway, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Yes. Um, I, because you're constantly growing. And I guess that's one of my favorite things about the space is I'm a completely different person. Even in the last, like, not, I'm not even kidding. The, the person I am in the last like, three months yes. is unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. My growth is so aggressive right now. And, but one of my favorite things that ever happened is I went to my, my, maybe my second event or something with our company. I go to a crew event, our CEO is on stage and he says, uh, and I mean, I was going through it. This is when it was like arrow after arrow, after arrow, after arrow, after arrow. It felt like I couldn't breathe. I don't know if anybody's ever felt like you're just drowning and you're like, <gasps> just like, <gasps> like, just like a gasp of air, right? I would have those moments where maybe I'd sell a trial or I'd recruit somebody. Oh God, thank God somebody still believes in me, right? Like I'd have those little gasps of air, but it was, it was one thing after another. And our CEO said on stage, the, the harder the fall the higher the bounce. Mm -hmm. And I'm a crier anyway, but I freaking lost it. I was having one of those cleansing sobs, like a, like a Kim Kardashian, <laughs> holy hell sob, right? Because it felt like I was free falling. It felt like nothing was in control. The amount that I questioned them to give you a perspective, okay? They, they fought, I had these, you know, these people who followed, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't know about you. I, I mean, yeah, okay, you're being really nice, but like, ah, you know, because I've been betrayed and betrayed and betrayed and betrayed and betrayed and betrayed and betrayed. Like, I say it now, like, I still don't fully trust people with like a 100%. Yeah. It's none of their fault. They're freaking perfect. They never did anything wrong to me. It, it, I was crushed in 2017, right? That's me working through my demons, right? It, but that was such a shift in my perspective, such a shift in my mindset, such a shift in, well, what the hell do you want your life to look like? And then taking all of the stuff and all the trainings and all the growth and all the development back to Christine. The fact that she just literally just said to them, admitted to them in front of their faces, I still don't trust them 100%. What? <laughs> like, girl, these, these people have uprooted their lives to be loyal to you, to follow you. Oh, there we go. Oof, I love that this chair goes back. Like these people have uprooted their whole lives to support you, essentially to make you more money. So what do you mean you don't trust them completely? What else do they have to do? Frozen all the development, back to Christina just for a hot second, just a shout out to her. I know she won't watch it, right? She's, she's doing her thing. But like she said to me in a car the other day, driving around in her, her car she earned, she said to me, she's like, I was talking to her about manifestation. <laughs> Also, another thing, if you were doing so well in Modair, I feel like this really just pulls back the curtain even more. But if you were doing so well in Modair and you were, you know, already a millionaire, why did you have to, like, why couldn't you take time off? Why would you have to keep working? Like, why couldn't you just hang out for a bit or maybe actually start your own business? And of course, not everyone wants to start their own business. I get it. I, it's, it's hard as fuck. Like, Today, I have to pay payroll taxes and I don't want to, but I have to. It's like, wait, I have to pay the government money because I'm paying myself. I'm already get doing that so that I can take out taxes and give them more money, essentially. It's like, what? It, what is, what's happening? What is happening? It's so weird, but this is insane. And I, I think she's one of the people who believes her own bullshit and that she doesn't even realize how absolutely insane this sounds maybe she does i don't know she is a villain for sure why do i always see too much of her crotch i don't want to girl i don't want to see your crotch no thank you in alignment and it's funny because this girl's trained for years now like just chill just like get in a hammock and like relax and it'll come to you and i'm like oh geez like i'm just gonna so i'm gonna run this girl over the car like she just doesn't get it she doesn't understand work right and I'm coaching her on bringing alignment and joy into her life because that's what, what's missing. And she sat and she's driving, she goes, Jessie Lee, like, I, I, you're right. <laughs> like, I never thought it would be you <laughs> talking to me about getting clear on what I want in life and getting clear on what brings joy to my life and getting clear on where I want to go in life and just saying, screw it all to the rest. 
And so I guess my biggest takeaway, there we go, I got to it. <laughs> I came up with one, no, I'm kidding. But my biggest takeaway has been like, we've become so powerful. We've become such a force. We've become the team in network marketing everybody knows about because I've only been saying yes to what is right for us. Not trying to make other people happy. I know I don't make other people happy. I know there's people even on the team that are like, oh, you know, she's got her systems and her scripts and her robots and her, she just got to follow in line. This is a freaking business, man. Play all you want. I'm not going to apologize for making sure Bree's family's taken care of. I'm not going to apologize for making sure Sydney's family's taken care of. I'm not going to apologize for making sure that, that Brittany's family is taken care of. I'm not going to apologize for making sure Courtney's family is taken care of. And if it bothers you, that ain't my problem. And I could not have said that four years ago. I'd have been like, I'm going to hurt some feelings, man. So I'm going to say yes to me, but then I'm also going to say yes to them. And I'm not going to set any boundaries. I'm going to let everybody push me around. And da, 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 da. As soon as I said, this is the way it's going to be. And we're going to build a freaking empire. Everybody's going to know who we are, what we're about. For decades and decades and generations to come is when everything changed. And so my takeaway goes along with all this. Follow your gut. Follow who you are. You know, you know exactly where you're supposed to be in life. And somebody said this, y'all know it, y'all have all heard it probably, but you're exactly where you're supposed to be before you change it. Mm. Right here watching this Facebook Live. The fact that she's recording for her podcast on an iPad, as someone who has a podcast, Beauty and the Dad Bod, go listen to it. That is offensive. That is so offensive. And she has all this money, yet she's so lazy. And it's all regurgitated content. It's on Facebook Live. It's on Instagram Live. It's on this. It's on that. It will, She'll probably put the video on YouTube as well on her not good YouTube channel. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. Da, da, da. What has been an aha moment for you? We don't have to all answer it, but maybe somebody has one. I gotta think. Hold on. All right, well, then I'll ask another one while I think about that. Does someone want to share their greatest accomplishment in four years? One! Yeah! Me and Lisa, what's the greatest accomplishment? So, oh my okay, so I mean, how do you mean greatest? No, I can tell you what my greatest accomplishment is. My greatest accomplishment is fighting, is fighting myself. It's, yeah. Screw the money, screw all of it. Like, But that's why you have the money. Right. Because you stop trying to be straight girl Sydney who didn't like herself who like that's your brain right, right people my greatest accomplishment is that I love myself like <laughs> fucking full hardly <laughs> that. I know it's so mushy and like gross but like, <laughs> it's, it's mushy it, it is mushy but like that is my greatest accomplishment I can't say I don't think that I'm no 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 I know that four years ago I didn't love myself I wanted to drive my car off a freaking road like I I didn't want to be here that's Screw all the rest of it. Like, no, that's my greatest accomplishment for sure. I love it. Nothing to follow after that. Guys, yeah, I <laughs> same. Next question. Same. Start with another one. <laughs> well, well, I'll, I'll tell you mine. Okay. My greatest accomplishment is just is all not not only all of you, but really watching our leaders lead. Mm -hmm. Like you have those moments. Um, I think when you're a leader and you you have a vision of where you want to take your business, where you know it can't just be you, which is why it's never been called Jesse Lee's Empire, right? That's just psychotic. Mm -hmm. But sitting there and watching <laughs> what Jesse weird. Lee's Empire, yeah, <laughs> terrible. But watching another after another after another earn a car, or like a cross on she can't see her, but she's here. Like Megan Hunter was homeless, homeless, and she drives a free vehicle, right? Or Brooke, I used to, she's here too would sit on these coaching calls with me sobbing about how I'm never going to be able to get out of debt. I'm going to die tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I'm, I'm going to die like this. This is how, this is just the way my life is going to be, Jesse Lee. And I'm like shaking her through Zoom. Like watching my choice to develop, be able to coach people through their darkest times and turn into the best versions of themselves. You cannot put a price tag on that. To Sydney's point, F the money. 
You know, you can go buy, we all drive fancy cars, okay? We all have the houses, we all have all the stuff. It's exciting for like 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay? <laughs> Um, Jesse doesn't have a house. <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't have a house. So she also thinks that I rent my house, which is nothing wrong with renting. Go for it. But I don't ever want to go back to renting personally. However, like, it's just so gross. I hate it. And you say F the money, F that, F this. That's the only reason y'all do any of this. That's the reason why you couldn't stop and why you had to go to another MLM after Modere. You couldn't just stop. Isn't it amazing how they didn't actually talk about Modere or even tell the truth about it? They didn't say why she got fired. They didn't talk about any of that. Now they're doing a Q&A, just building each other up and acting like these are the best friends you need to have and this is the type of team you want to be on. <laughs> but when you have the power of something she just said, we're like, I love me, screw that. <laughs> you know, right? It doesn't matter anymore. Mm. You can't take that from us. And I and I've taught them this for years. Why does she do that? She goes, ha, 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 ha. Wiggum is looking at me like, bitch, what are you doing? Stop. Me too, buddy. I want her to stop too. I'm sorry. Just lay down. Yeah, just go back to sleep. Mm. Like, oh, she's so weird. She acts like she's just so hard and like so cool. But in reality, she uh, allegedly, uh, she even says that she's she's not like this in real life that like this isn't the real her which is like how that's so weird and unhealthy why do you have multiple personalities purely for the sake of social media and money we could argue that it's like method acting but it's not <laughs> it's not at all i've done this for years and it's not their jesse lee original by any stretch of the imagination but hurt people hurt people and you can see five very healed people on your screen right now. It's it's not a joke. He's watching. <laughs> He's watching this live. It's not a joke. These are very healed, full people. And that is because of this. So that's my greatest accomplishment because we see it every day. We coach people every day. Every so this business made you love yourself, made you be your real self got you out of debt, got you away from being homeless, got you off the streets and healed you because you were a hurt person, hurting person, hurting people, hurting persons. It's a cult. It's a cult. It's a cult. Every single one of us coaches and teaches and trains and gets on mentoring call calls and you name it. Calls. What the hell? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Get on mentoring calls. It's a gift. And uh, that's my greatest accomplishment for sure. Um, since everyone else is crying and they don't want to share. Um, <laughs> let's see, um, we'll, we'll wrap it up with a couple of, let's see, where do you think you'll be in four years? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'll be here. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of big shit. Yeah. Yeah. All million dollar rooms for sure. Oh, sure. I mean, you're with our own million dollar room. I mean, I'll be marrying for sure. Yeah, you'll be married. We have babies. Yeah. Aww. Oh my god! I'm dead. <sighs> I might be married with babies. I don't know if you're watching, you know, <laughs> slide in the DM. Oh, Must be yeah. Italian. <laughs> Must be Italian, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah that'll be a good start. Must not be an F boy. <laughs> Correct. Um,. I don't know, because if you would have told me we'd be here in four years, mm -hmm. um, no. I don't. I don't know that I would have believed that. I, think, I was just gonna say, I think it's. I think it's more powerful that we allow ourselves to expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. That's why we we came so far because we stopped trying to set time limits on it. Because really, you truly not just the original, but she's trying to say hers. Uh, you overestimate what you can do in a year, but you underestimate what you're doing five or ten. Mm -hmm. um, Girl, I haven't said that in a long time. Good one. Pull that one out of there. <laughs> and it's, it's yeah. just really powerful to look back at those moments, like four years ago and five years ago, and be like, life was happening to you. That's what you felt, and you can connect the dots. And sometimes it takes that long mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Do, you, do any of you think it's too late for people who are maybe like, oh my god, I, I should have been part of that original group. I should have 
I should have come with you. Like, I, I missed the boat. Y'all, we just developed this system called the lab. We are just now getting our shit together. <laughs> so, like, come on in. Because we are just now getting our shit together. <laughs> we, are, we are just now getting it together. So, you are perfect. Timing is great. <laughs> you missed the organized chaos. Now you're going to get the system. I said, I said this the other day. I said that uh, the Empire was originally built with, like, 20 year olds and 30 year olds that had no idea what the hell they were doing. They were just like floundering around, throwing things at the wall, like trying our best to get it to happen. And then we brought in a bunch of really, really smart people like Megan Hunter and Megan George that have system brains. And uh, they're all making us like a hundred times better. So we're about to be a freaking force and you'd be silly not to get started now. Yeah, I mean, four years. Um, I actually kind of like to look at this. You didn't know what you were doing. And now you hardly know what you're doing and you're just now getting your ish together. Sounds like I really want to join that team. Business in the sense of actual years of life, right? Um, and we're four years old. Like, what are you doing when you're four? You're in preschool. Yeah, you're not doing much. You're not contributing too much to society. So by the time we're eight, uh, you know, we'll be writing in cursive. So that's something we can look forward to. Um, we don't do that anymore? No. Oh, thank God. Jeez. I mean, that was terrible. We don't know how to write hieroglyphics anyhow. Um, so, <laughs> no, but by the time we're eight, God, I mean. We're learning how to type now. Yeah, we're, we're literally just starting. Yeah. And that's, that's really the best part. I think that's a, that's a great time to actually, uh, bring, bring some more people in really fast. Just want to introduce you to some people mentioned in the lab. So that I want to bring you guys in really quickly. Because it is, it is the original eight, but this team is not. Well, only the original yes. eight. And I, I say that because I think sometimes people think, oh my God, am I going to be, am I ever going to get in that inner circle? Oh my God, am I ever going to be part of something um, myself? Oh my God, am I ever going to, you know, make my millions? Am I ever going to make my impact? Am I ever going to fit in their circle? And uh, so these are three of our lab members. We have a lab of 12. The lab stands for Leadership Advisory Board. You can drop lab in the chat. It'd be cool. Um, Leadership Advisory Board. There's 12 of us. One lives in Mexico. One lives in Italy. They cannot come right now for obvious reasons. Um, Amanda is actually on her way. So uh, we miss you. We love you. And then Kayla is sick. But uh, and so I was like, keep your bar full low over there. We love you. <laughs> um, but to the point of a lot of things, it's just the core of the empire, right? By the way, there are two men in the lab, so honestly, we're like, where is the, where's the beef? All right, let's get Rest it, we got beef. All right, Roberto's probably watching flexing over there, so, okay? All right, and Mateo is very handsome, and I'm trying to find out if he has a father. So, I'm just kidding, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right. But anyway, so, uh, hey, it's my life, you know, like, you gotta expect the unexpected, man. Expect the unexpected. Never changed in nine years. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, a huge shout out. This is Megan George. Megan. Yeah, it's hard. Megan George. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brooke Forge and Megan Hunter. And uh, I'll just give a huge shout out to Megan. You know, she, she made a point when she came in. She's like, the only diversity in your team is with you, Jesse Lee. You're the only one recruiting diverse people, and I want this team to be more diverse. And we've made a huge shift over the last, I'd say, what, 18 months? Uh, almost two years to include literally everyone and everything. But if you want to introduce yourself really quickly, I think that'd be awesome. And maybe maybe share your experience um, in the sense of you you weren't or an original eight and you're here making uh, making big moves. I, I also want to give a shout out to you really quick before you start. And maybe you can talk first. But uh, also, it was a year ago. It was literally a year ago that you hit champ. Mm -hmm. You were here in Dallas mm -hmm. and you spoke on the Zoom and you said people come to the Empire to heal. Yeah. And I think we need it on a t-shirt because literally everybody close to Megan Hunter now. So. Yeah, we do need that on a shirt. And I was the one watching the original A on Facebook going, I want to do it, I want to do it. But I don't want to do network marketing anymore. Like I just was like, I didn't want to do it. But I was the one watching all of you from before it ever started. Like I was at home literally like this. What's going to happen today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so lab is leadership advisory board. It's it's just the empire. It's the same thing. It's nothing different. But they act like so. It's maybe like a um I don't know like a more exclusive part of it. And it's to this is so ridiculous. Like they 
they say the original eight, the original eight, you know, constantly and try to make people feel like they're missing out. Like the whole, I want to sit with them. I want to seat at the table. I want to be in the room when it happens because they see the success that these people have had and they want that. They want that really bad. So now they're basically doing it all over again. And they're saying like, oh, well, if, if you have, if you're not in the original eight, now you can be part of the lab. Get your goddamn lab coats. We're going to be in the room when it happens, y'all. Gross, disgusting, manipulative FOMO. That's all it is. It's just another MLM manipulation tactic. That's it. Okay, sorry. It was a straw. But what I did know is that you were an excellent business entrepreneur. I learned so much from you. I was inspired to what to change my life. And I was at a place where I did not have money to invest in my future. And you showed up consistently. All of their resting faces look so miserable. And I feel like that is very telling. And I don't want to be the type of person to be like, oh, you should smile more. No, that's not it. But it doesn't really sound like they're listening. It sounds like they're just waiting for whoever's talking to stop talking so that they can talk. That's like the vibe I get from this. Like if you're listening to someone, you're like engaging and like like the ladies of Dunder Mifflin taught Dwight Schrute, you eye contact and you're listening and nodding. Up consistently every single day to provide value to people like me. Mm. And when it came time that actually... There's less than 100 people watching this live stream now. There's only a minute left. And I'm pretty sure that's why Jesse sees this. And she didn't let anyone else introduce themselves because the engagement is going so far down. And you can tell by seeing the same people over and over and over again comment. There's 83 people on the live. In Instagram. And that's a, that's essentially where she had that's her biggest platform. So that's pretty embarrassing that <laughs> that she's not like that no one cares. No one cares. Only the like the people on your team and the sum of the people in other network marketing companies. You're just brainwashing the people that are under you to stay with you. Needed the product that you were selling, it was almost as if it was finally my time to say yes. It was meant to be. So I can now, some, sometimes I'll look back and go, ah, oh, I was supposed to be number nine. Oh, I, love oh, you. Oh, I was screaming at the, I was like, oh my God, mom, mom. That's all. I really felt called, but I, I didn't follow through going back to the intuition. Um, but I'm so, I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful um, for, for all of it. I'm so grateful for all of it because the one thing for me, my biggest takeaway is that when I started, when I made the decision to invest, when I finally said yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe it, it just ended. Maybe it did keep going, but that's the, um, as long as the person who recorded it for me or sent it to me because I don't ask people to record this stuff. <laughs> you think I want to see this? Uh, that's as far as they did it because that was boring as hell, right? Like it's all FOMO. That's all that was supposed to be. And all she did was clickbait it to be like, oh yeah, we're going to tell all. We're going to tell you all about why this person got fired. And at the beginning, she's like, oh, we never talk about this. You still didn't talk about it. All you did was clickbait your audience into wanting to know why you got fired from two previous MLMs. You were fired. You are the problem. You are the problem, Jesse Lee Ward. And that's all I got to say about that. So please, 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 please take off your rose-colored glasses, even if it's just for a second so that you can look at these red flags and understand. It really, just question, question it. Just question someone's motives. Of course, I've said that so many times, and of course, their motive is going to be money or power. For this person, it's both. It's money and power. And that's unfortunate because it has hurt a lot of people. And I don't want you to fall for that. And not even just with this person, but with other top people in MLMs as well. Money and power, that's all they care about and getting themselves ahead and their own their own self-interest. So you are better than that. You are way better. You are too good to be taken advantage of for someone else's personal gain or financial gain in this case with MLMs. 
It's scammy, it's slimy, it's disgusting, and you are so much more than just a dollar sign or a rank up or sign up bonus. Remember how valuable you are. Stay spicy. If you want to get some hats, go to theselfishsuarezes.com. That's linked down below. Listen to the podcast. New episodes every Monday and the bonus episodes two Wednesdays out of every month. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you in my next video. Okay, bye.